Law number four, lift heavy things. Uh, again, if you look at ancestral movement patterns and ancestral lifestyle patterns and behavioral patterns, our ancestors lifted heavy things once in a while. Not all the time, not every day for an hour, but once in a while lifted heavy things. So that would mean um, lugging stones at a camp or building a campsite or climbing a tree to, uh, to, to look for a, uh, some source of game in the distance. Or, or sprinting after the game, or lugging the game back to the camp after a kill, or carrying babies around, or carrying what you forage back to camp. So our hunter-gatherer ancestors did exert themselves to a certain degree. Uh, we would call that resistance training today, uh, a couple of times a week. Not, again, not every day, uh, but enough that it would prompt their bodies to respond to the stress of this uh, physical activity, this high intensity physical activity, by building a stronger muscle. And that's really what we're seeking to achieve in the gym today, uh, is emulating this hunter-gatherer experience of lifting heavy things to create stronger muscles, more powerful muscles, uh, in some cases uh, more well-toned muscles, uh, but those muscles also uh, help us um, metabolize sugar better, for instance. So insulin resistance can be avoided by uh, lifting heavy things. What we do to lift heavy things is we find ways in the gym to uh, manipulate weights. So we might lift dumbbells or barbells or we might get on the machines. We might even do some of the primal essential movements, the push-ups, uh, the planks, the pull-ups, and the squats. But all of these are contemplated to uh, improve our strength, improve our mobility, once again, improve, improve our agility, improve our power uh, to confer some amount of longevity on us, uh, to help control blood sugar, uh, to help us burn fat. And we don't need to do it a lot. It's really like twice a week. So anywhere from 15 to 35 minutes twice a week would be a sufficient amount of high intensity activity uh, in the way of lifting heavy things. There is no one right way to lift heavy things. Some people choose to do three sets of 15 repetitions of whatever they can do for 15. Other people choose to do two sets of five repetitions of whatever they can do, a much heavier weight. Uh, there are variations in between. There are um, you know, pyramid sets where you can work your way up from Lots of repetitions of a low weight to one repetition of the heaviest weight you can do and work your way back down. And all of these uh, are legitimate ways of putting your body through that minor stress that it requires, that signaling device, that epigenetic signaling factor that will prompt your body to respond by building stronger muscles. You don't need to go to a gym to, to lift heavy things. You can do uh, body weight exercises, you can do air squats, and if you're tired of doing 50 air squats on both legs, you can do a couple of air squats on one leg. And it, believe me, it'll, it'll add up. and It'll be the equivalent of whatever you can put pile on at the gym. Um, Push-ups are a great, again, a great way of, uh, of doing high intensity activity and lifting heavy things without being in the gym. Uh, for the longest time, I carried a weight vest with me. And so I would do squats with a weight vest. I'd do pull-ups with a weight vest. I would do dips with a weight vest. I didn't need a gym. Uh, I just needed a space. I could do that in a, in a hotel room. Uh, sometimes I bring rubber bands with me to a hotel room or if I'm on the road for a long time. I can do, do a tremendous workout uh, just utilizing uh, rubber bands. So there are lots of variations, lots of ways in which we can lift heavy things without having to depend on going to a gym.